All right, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go over the michaelis menten equation. As well, we're gonna go over Km V max in the michaelis menten plot. So let's begin. And I know this looks really scary, but we're gonna take it very, very slow. I'm assuming you're watching this video is because you learned this in class and, well, you didn't really learn it. You heard about it in class and you're still kind of confused on it. And my job is to make it even easier, really, really easy so you can understand. So we're gonna take it very slow. So first, in our body, how can we actually predict how fast a product will form given a substrate? This is when the michaelis menten equation comes in. So here we have a picture of uh, Michaelis, that's his last name, on the left, and then Menten, Mod Menten. So the reaction that they created goes as follows. The reaction velocity is equal to the max reaction velocity times the substrate con concentration divided by Km which is the Michaelis constant, plus the substrate, uh, substrate concentration. So let's break it down layer by layer. First, let's define Vmax. Vmax is the maximum speed or velocity at which an enzyme can catalyze a reaction. This also means that the enzyme is fully saturated with substrate. So adding more substrate will not do anything. So here are a little simple picture. The red looking molecules are enzymes and the blue ones are substrates. So how it usually works is the substrate will bind to the enzyme and then will form a product when it's finished. Well, here we have four enzymes, one, two, three, four. And they're already filled with substrates. We have a substrate here, 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 and here. And there's like substrates waiting. This is what we call Vmax. All the enzymes are taking up. They're all doing something. So no matter how many more substrates you were to add in this reaction, it's not going to go faster. It's not possible for more substrates to just bind the enzyme like that. The sub, think about like a line. The line always goes at a certain speed. You can, the line cannot go faster, if that makes sense, like a conveyor belt. The conveyor belt is set at a set speed. There's only so many workers that there are at the factory. So let's actually make it like this. Let me describe it. Say we have a factory, okay? And at the factory of 10 workers and they're assembling say like a toy. No matter how many toys you put on that line, those 10 workers can only do so much work. So you could fill the line with even like 10 million toys, the reaction rate is still gonna be the same. It caps out, because there's only so many enzymes there. There's only so many workers. That's what Vmax is. Km is a little bit more complicated. Km is the Michaelis constant. Km can also be defined as the substrate concentration at half of Vmax. This will make much more sense in the next slide. But just keep this in mind. In other words, a low Km value means a high substrate binding affinity. A high Km means a low substrate binding affinity. So basically, in other words, it's basically saying how tightly does the substrate bind to the enzyme? And how efficient is the enzyme with varying substrate concentrations? So let's go back to this diagram here. This is say that there's glue on the enzyme. What KM is basically saying is how sticky is that glue? Is the substrate going to want to stay there or is it just going to leave because it's not sticky enough? 
That's what KM is basically saying. So how did they actually come up with this? How did Michaelis and Menton actually come up with these values? They didn't just pull VMAX and came out of their ass. They, they found some way to do that. They used calculus. Now, don't worry. I am 99.99999% sure you are, not, you are not responsible in the calculus. I have to derive this. It's because this is not a math class, it's a biochemistry class. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't even know how to do it. Because it's, it's just so many steps to derive. So let's actually talk about KM first. How did they actually come up with KM? So here we have a little equation here. And this is a simple enzyme substrate product reaction. All this is saying is that in the beginning, we start out with an enzyme and a substrate. Say we just put this in a beaker. You put a substrate in the beaker and you put an enzyme in the beaker. Then we have something called K1. This is basically the reaction constant. How fast is it going to get to ES? Basically, what this means is the enzyme is bound to the substrate. Here, it's not bound. They're separate. But after some time, they're going to bind. The enzyme and the substrate are going to bind together, like that glue we just talked about. Now, when the enzyme and substrate are bound together, there are two things that can happen. It can either dissociate and go back to where we started from, which is, that's why you have a negative one, a K negative one. Or we get the other option. We actually form a product. So the substrate goes away and we form the product. And that's why you have K2. This is the second reaction constant. So with these reaction constants, they realize that if you just sum them together in a way, in a, in a reaction, in a, sorry, in an equation, that's Km. So they form this equation. Km is equal to K to the negative, or K subscript negative 1 plus K2 divided by K1. So the top is the tendency to break away from the enzyme substrate complex. And K1 is the tendency to form that complex. So let's look this here again. So look at, let's look at K negative 1 here and the K2. We're going away from the enzyme substrate com uh, complex here, right? K negative 1 goes this way. And then the K2 goes, uh, K2 goes to the product side, enzyme product um, result. So they're going, both going away from the enzyme substrate complex. But K1, we're going towards the enzyme, enzyme substrate complex. I hope that, that that makes sense. So K2 is going away, right, from ES. K negative 1 is going away from ES. But K1 is the only one going to ES. And that's how they basically found, it, found this out. So on exams, if you were given that the reaction constants, K2, K1, and K negative 1, if you were given all of those, you can figure out Km. And just, just to reiterate that the E equals enzyme, S equals substrate, P equals product, and K to like the n subscript n is the rate constant. And that's how they figured out Km. So about v Vmax. So in a previous video, I mentioned this very briefly, something called enzyme turnover number. If you do not remember, that's why I said, if you said no, enzyme turnover number is how many substrate molecules are converted to product in a given time frame. So remember, when we're at this enzyme substrate complex, not all of it's actually going to go to the product side. We're not going to always make product. Sometimes it's going to go backwards. Sometimes it just dissociates into the substrate and enzyme. So we go backwards. So that's why we have the enzyme turnover rate. How likely are we going to get to the product side? That's basically what enzyme turnover rate is saying. So this is how they got Vmax. So first, K1 
two is the same thing as enzyme turnover rate. So we call this K catalysis or K catalyze. So this is the enzyme turnover number, which makes sense because we're going towards the product side. This number is basically how likely are we going to get to the product. So then that's how we got. So basically we got K2 equals V max divided by the enzyme concentration. So they took this equation and rewrote it a little bit. And they're like, okay, V max is equal to the enzyme turnover rate or K2 or K catalysis times the enzyme concentration, the total number of enzymes we're dealing with. If we were to multiply these two numbers, we get Vmax. Now, this is the michaelis menten plot. This is a very frequent exam type question in that they're going to ask you, what is Km or draw where Km is. So the first thing you're going to do well, the first thing you're going to be showing is this red line here. It's basically saying the substrate concentration and its given velocity. So notice here, it kind of starts to level off here, and it goes into like a horizontal line there. That's Vmax. When it starts to get a little bit horizontal, almost nearly horizontal, that's Vmax. So what you basically have to do is you have to draw a dotted line all the way across until you're almost touching where it levels off. And that is Vmax. The maximum velocity of this reaction. And this makes sense. It's because when we're leveling off, the velocity is staying constant. We cannot go faster. We can add as much substrate concentration as we want. We can add tenfold if you wanted to, but the, the velocity is not going to go higher. Now, when, we've, when you've done that part, then we can actually figure out Km. All you have to do is take half of Vmax. So just estimate on the graph where halfway is of Vmax. So if this was, say, Vmax right here, this halfway is around here. Vmax divided by 2. And when you do that, all you have to do is draw another dotted line from that point, And the point it connects to our graph, our, our little curve here, Go straight down, and that is Km. This point right here is Km. It's going to be a number. It's the substrate concentration. So let's just add numbers now. So just say this is 0, and then this is like 100. This is 200, 300, all the way to like a million. Okay. And then just say this is... Uh, this is unreal, unrealistic numbers, but this is like 15, this is 7.5, this is like 4. Okay, so we're saying that we've calculated Vmax. So let's just go over this again. We got Vmax, which is like around 15, because that's where it starts to level off. It starts to level off there. We get half of Vmax, which is, you know, Vmax divided by 2, which is 7.5. We take 7.5 and we draw a horizontal line, and when it touches the, the at the point it touches the graph, the curve goes straight down, and that is Km. So Km equals 100. And that is how you calculate Km and Vmax from the plot and the equation. So if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Oh, I must say, this is very important. This equation is actually highly inaccurate. Notice that we, from this graph, we were just estimating, right? Because this horizontal line 
it doesn't, it's not purely horizontal. It's just that there's some fluctuation. So it's not 100% accurate. This is just an estimate. There is a way to actually get a more precise answer, and that's going to probably be the next video. There's another equation. But until next time, later.